Welcome back to another one folks. Time to do some tank traps today for some more scattered terrain for your boards. So, to do this one, all you need to do is take some more of those spares that you cut out of your big batch of cutting for the bases you need to take for this display. One large and then three small, just to give you a little bit of variety of what you put down. For this, I'm just going to make one set of the large and three small. If you're making a batch of these, make however many you need as you're making them as you go. So once you take whatever many you need out of your pile of pre-cuts, put the rest to the side. You won't need the rest of them anymore until we move on to something else. And then once this stage is done, move on to the next one. Stage 2, here we go. So this is a use for some of the vast collections of old sprues I'm sure many of us have lying around. You want to spend some time with a pair of clippers cutting out any lengths of straight sprue that you think are the length you need. They don't all need to be the same height, they can be different lengths, different heights. It doesn't really matter, once you glue them together, you get them sitting the nicely the way you want them set. So all you need to do to make your tank traps work is just set out however many pieces you need. Three pieces of sprue make a tank trap, so just set out however many bits you want for however many you want on each base. And then once that's done, you want to get your glues out and start gluing your tank traps together. I suggest for this one, uh, super glue or uh, plastic cement, poly cement that you want to use because it will give you that quick hold that lets you set them up, glue them together, and within a few seconds you're able to stand them up and you're good to go with a ready built tank trap to put out on your bases. Stage 3, here we go, time to turn on the hot glue gun, let it all heat up, get it ready to go. Once you've got it all nice and warmed up, all you need to do is pick whatever parts of your tank traps are going to be the feet that are stuck into the ground, add a little dab of hot glue at the bottom of every single one, and then glue them down onto your bases. Simple as that, it's a quick and easy step, shouldn't take too much. If you leave any lumps or offcuts or little stringy wisps on the base at this stage, just pull them off just before they dry, and then once that's done, you can move on to the next stage. Simple as that. On stage 4, time to get some paint down once all your glue is all dried off. And for this, we're just going to be base coating the foam bases just to harden them off, give them a little bit of protection. Same as always for that wear and tear of tabletop, we're going to be using the textured house paint that I've used for the majority of the basing so far on these builds. Because, in my opinion, it gives a lot of good results. Don't need to be too tidy with this, you can be messy and throw it down on the bases where there's ground contact on the tank traps and you can just blend that in with some flocking and paint later and it'll look all like more wear and tear to blend things in nicely for the tabletop. And once you get this stage done and you set them all to the side to dry, we'll move on to the next one. Stage 5, here we go, just pick some nice, same as always, dark base coats for your paint, just for the basic soil effect of what you'll be putting on on your bases. I've just picked a dark brown and then just slap it on all over your bases as you see fit. Just cover everything, every square inch of them, up and down all over. If you get some, again at this point, on the sprues, it doesn't matter, it'll act as a base coat for them as well because any layers of paint and damage, wear and tear, it will all look good in the end once you blend it in all nicely with all the finished paint and flocking. So a base coat for some plastics again will do no harm whatsoever. Just make sure you get all the little hidden white bits and any tailies of the base coat you might find lying around here and there. 
just make sure to cover them all with this base coat and then once that's done, set them all aside to dry and we'll move on to the next one. Stage 6, here we go. Time for a bit of a dry brush. Same big old makeup brush you get anywhere you like out of Poundland. Same one I use for most videos. And then what you want to do is you want to take your shades of lighter browns, uh, blacks, beiges, anything you like to make some depth and detail onto your bases for where it might show through the flocking. Again, just weather it all on, all the bases, thick as you like. This is a nice point to bring out any dry brushing extra details into any battle damage or areas you have scarred or broken bits of tank traps you've put on various parts of these bases. Now's a good time to do that just to fill them in to add that extra little depth of detail as you go. And once this stage is done, again, set it to the side, let them dry for a wee while. Once they're good to go, Stage 7, a little bit of detail paint here, time to base coat the rest of the tank traps that you haven't already covered, anything that's still grey of the initial sprue showing through, just take a nice big black, don't need to water this down for this, the thicker the better in my opinion, adds a little bit of detail, looks like welds and extra rust factor for later on, and then just slap the black all over, just coat them nice, nice thick base coat for these, it'll just make it a little bit easier when we come to the next stage later on. Stage 8, nearly there now, time to get some flocking down, this is the same watered down PVA I use for everything, or you can use straight PVA, however you prefer, I find mine to run just that little bit more, maybe a 70-30 mix of PVA and water. Again, you take your brush, put your PVA on wherever you like. For these tank traps, I've decided to go with uh, a little more of sand and rubble mix to go for the generic tank traps on beach for any D-Day boards that you might be going for for a historic game or any very rubber rubble filled areas within your post apocalyptic settings for any future stuff. With this one it's important I would say also do not flock any damaged areas you've made 
so any craters or shell holes you have created, it is best to leave them clear of any flocking at this point, and they'll shoot off all the more to be seen from distance on the table, if they're free and clear and just as painted as they are. So stage 9, here we go, just one final stage to keep you going, once all your flocking is down and finished, take your metal colour, it be silver or gunmetal, and then just roughly pick out all the tank traps to bring out any silver metal details on them, you can use any colour you like, if you prefer to use a red colour for painted treated metals, or any other you like. I find even once you put the silver on, going over with a black wash or a brown wash just to blend them in a little and age them up to say, show them in situ with a little bit of battle damage is also a nice touch and when you're doing the wash you can also add it to any craters or shell holes just to add a little bit of a wet effect to look like the water has gathered in places and it's muddier and churned up and generally a bit more of a mess than it would otherwise be. And then once that's done You've got the one final stage to go, and then that's them ready for the table. Once you get this part done and they're all dried, it's on to stage 10 when you get your watered down PVA, a little bit of varnish in it, spray all over, to hold that flocking down into place with a bit of sealant, keep it all good and ready for the table. And here are a few glamour shots of it sitting in situ once you get them down for the game. Thanks for coming, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.